This special presentation of SHOT Show 2018 was made possible by Air Guns of Arizona, Air Gun Depot, Pyramid Air, Umarex USA, Air Force Air Guns, Crossman Corporation, Hatsan USA, and JSB Predator International. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Guys, we're in the Crossman booth and I'm here with Philip Guadalupe, product manager for Crossman. Nice to say hi to everybody. Hey, how's it going everybody? <laughs> Behind the scenes, Phil's one of those guys that, that um, develops these concepts and tunes them the way you guys want them and the way that you know they think their customers want them. So I grabbed them to take, take us through some of the, the new product this year. But if, um, you know, if you're a follower of AEAC, you'll know that uh, we very recently reviewed the new Benjamin Marauder Regulated. Oh, yep. So what I've asked, uh, uh, and I'll put a link to that video in the description down below, so you guys can can watch that another time. But I've asked Philip to, you know, take us through the gun, let us know a little bit about what makes it so special and and right. uh, what makes it tick. So everyone's familiar with the Marauder. Uh, a lot of things that we did that were changed. Uh, we kind of we set up the tune differently. There's a 25 cal transfer port in here uh, for the 177 and 22 custom shop Marauder, and we added that regulator. Um, and because of the regulator, we wanted to give you the true onboard uh, pressure of the, the actual reservoir. So you move the gauge up, you get a nice looking stock with this one. Uh, this one's featuring the mossy oak stock where we have a couple mossy oak, a couple real trees, or you can get the wood stock uh, uh, for it. Um, it took up about two inches of the air reservoir, so we added and extended the, the air reservoir to get an additional two inches so you didn't lose any air from that. So with the tune, we're getting up to 80 shots for 22, 85 plus shots for 177. Um, it's, it is still tunable. So you still have the, the valve feature in there, the hammer spring, the, uh, the striker. You can still adjust that. If you turn it one way, you're gonna increase your shot count, lower your velocity. Um, you can still tune it up a little bit and reduce your shot count. But uh, on average, coming out of the box, you're gonna get about 80, 80 plus shots. Okay. So. so I'm going to ask Philip a little bit of a challenging question, and if you can't answer, you know, it's cool. Okay. But, you know, this, this is a gun that obviously has a, you know, a huge following. You know, it's one of the original PCPs. Yeah. You know, North America has you know, enjoyed a lot of success. You know, it's priced right. It performs at a high level. A lot of people, they like it. Yep. But, you know, there's like two circles of people out there, right? There's, there's a circle that want a really high, powerful Benjamin Marauder, either maybe for hunting or reaching out to 50 and 100 yards and you know, being able to buck that wind a little bit. And then you've got this group, you know, that maybe want an economy version yeah. of that rifle. You know, they want more shots and tuned a little bit more conservatively. It's quieter, you know, that way. Can you maybe speak to everyone at home and kind of give your, as a company, your, your yeah. thoughts on, on, on those two different directions with, with the Marauder? So last year we, we started off with the launch with the field and target version, but that was a, an on-off regulator and uh, but when we started uh, actually uh, diving deep into the into the tune of the gun, uh, what we were finding out that we can kind of meet best of both worlds for the most part, um, and we were outperforming the the regulated version that we had. So you get faster velocity and more shot count. Because if you remember, it was only 50 to 70 shots, and we're and we're exceeding that for both calibers, uh, and the velocity is even higher. But if you still want to do that field target version, you can still tune it down, get it below the 20 foot pounds, uh, or even lower if you want, uh, depending on the, the event you're going to shoot at. Um, but we still feel that even at the current velocity, it is a, a hunting gun for small game, and you can still do that, or you can use it for target shooting. Um, we, we are looking at doing uh, possibly maybe another uh, tuning for the, the, the regulator. So, if you want to get a more hot, more shot uh, velocity, but a little bit uh, shot count, um, but still have that consistency, that's still up in the air. But uh, right now we we feel comfortable where it's at, and, and we're going to see how it rides out the first year. That sounds so. good. So these guys at home, you know, I'm here to carry the mail for them and to bring yeah. you the questions that they ask me, and you know, those were those were things that are important to them. You know, you got these two circles, you know, that they, in their worlds, you know, one may one tune may not be relevant to the other, and and that's what they're asking, you know, they, yeah. they say, you know, one of the greatest things about the Marauder is traditionally it's been one of the most tunable hammer, hammer spring tunable adjustments yeah. or guns out there. But when you add the, when you add the regulator to the Marauder, now you have, you have, you have two mechanical devices that you need to tune. Yeah. 
So I think what Philip's saying is the Marauders, or the Marauder, the regulator's gonna yeah. be set from the factory it's, by you guys. Yes. And it's probably not that tunable, right? Uh, it's not. We have a, a special fixture that gives us the output of the, the regulator, and it's not easy for the consumer. Not saying it can't be done, but it's just not easy uh, for the end user to do it, uh, and it's not recommended. Okay, but the bright light there, I think he's also saying yeah. that you still have some level of controllability and tunability yeah. by the original hammer spring yep. adjustment yep. in a regulated Marauder. Yep. So if you, you get your shot chart, you know, you look at it that first time, if it's not quite where you want it, you can still control it to some degree. Yep. Is that right? Yep, sounds good. Cool. Now, the regulator isn't the only story with the Marauder. You guys made another big change this year, and it has to do uh, with barrels, right? Uh, yeah, Can you so speak to that? we we take our, we, t we take our customers seriously, and, and there were some things about accuracy out there in the past. But we revamped our whole barrel making process for the most part, and it, it, it launched with the the Maximus. And you can see some of the reviews of the accuracy that we're getting out with there. Um, but we transferred that to the Marauders, um, and even your review kind of speaks volumes to the the accuracy coming out of the gun. Um, but it. Um, I'm kind of stumbling myself now. That's okay. Um, well, there's two different yeah. barrels, right? Yeah. There's, there's so we, we also offer the Lothar Walther option, uh, which you didn't have for your review, and we just shortly released it right after the, the, the review. Can I, uh, can I hit pause right there? Yeah. There's a little funny story behind the <laughs> scenes on this. So I thought I was reviewing, the, that gun was so accurate, <laughs> I thought I was reviewing the Lothar Walther Benjamin Marauder Regulated. And then when I called these guys all excited, they're like, Steve, that's not the Lothar Walther barrel. That's that's the barrel that we make right here in New right. York State, made in America. You know, that's that's all us. Right. You know, you haven't reviewed the Lothar Walther barrel version yet, so right. that was just that was a funny little behind yeah. the scenes. Well, and to be honest, I kinda let it ride for a little bit. I <laughs> uh, just want to get the buzz created, uh, just to show how accurate the barrels are. You know, and maybe so. it was that placebo effect, because you know reality, real world circumstances. I was out there shooting the thing in the blowing wind, the 20 foot pound version in 2.2. And you know, we're talking six tenths of an inch at 50 yards repeatable and sub two inches in the wind at 100 repeatable. So, I mean, yeah, you can get the Lothar Walther, but in my world, that's all the accuracy you're ever gonna need to go, you know, to go hunting. But I am still excited yeah. to see you know, how, the, how the, that, that LW barrel yeah. compares. Just from initial uh, testing I've seen, we, we meet or exceed the Lothar Walther barrel, so, but the, poop, the proof is in the pudding, so once you start testing out and see how, how the gun shoots for you, you can make the decision or, or which one's better. That's a great angle, and so. made in America. If you want it all made yeah. in America, Benjamin Marauder, guys. So. Jesse, or, or Philip, yeah. let me call you Jesse. Jesse was my host last year. <laughs> Philip, thank you, yep. thank you very much. You can edit all that stuff out, so. <laughs> Here in the Crossman booth, guys, once again with Philip and the Fortitude. I saw this on the internet for the first time about two weeks ago. Yeah, we, we kind of kept it on the wraps for a while. <laughs> and, and it definitely made my hands start to sweat. In fact, they're starting to sweat right now yeah. just talking about it. I think you guys know at home what a huge advocate I am of the Benjamin Maximus. You know, I've reviewed the Maximus. You know, in the European version, I've reviewed the Maximus and the version we have here available in the States. And for $200 or sub $200, you get a ton of performance yeah. out of that little rifle. But this is a new year. You know, the industry has taken us in a different direction. Yep. You know, with, you know, I'm going to just come right out and say it. You know, with the release of the Umer X Gauntlet, they're kind of redefining, you know, what you can buy for $300 anymore. So um, <laughs> to me, it looks like a like a Benjamin Marauder had babies with a Benjamin, <laughs> with a Benjamin Maximus. So I'll just let Philip take you through it and, oh. and let you know, you know, what they're doing here with the brand new Fortitude. So with the Maximus, we came out with this phenomenal stock. So we wanted to use, utilize it for something new. And obviously with the, the gauntlet coming out, we want to do a reaction to that. Um, so what's different about this one, obviously the bottom end looks like a Maximus, but it's different. Um, it's 3,000 PSI max fill. The Maximus was only 2,000 PSI. Um, we added a regulator, so we shrunk down the valve, uh, shrunk down the regulator to fit just before the, the gauge board, and um, we added a uh, breech to it, repeated breech, similar to the, uh, the Max or the Marauder, I should say. Marauder, yeah. Um, so it takes the 10 shot rotary clips for both of the 177 22 uh, Marauder clips. 
Um, the breech is similar. It's an in-between between the, the, the Marauder pistol and the Marauder rifle. It looks so, like a Marauder breech, or kind yeah. of like a P-Rod. Yeah, so it looks like a P-Rod, but it's slightly bigger. Okay. Um, but we went with the bolt in the back that's more robust, um, did with that. And then we add the, the shrouded barrel, similar to the Marauder, and it still has the integrated sound suppression. But the main difference is it's a 24-inch barrel with only uh, three baffle stacks into it. Okay. So, but with the reduced velocity, the increase of the uh, capturing the pellet behind with the longer barrel, it's just as quiet, maybe slightly louder than the actual Marauder. What calibers do you see yourself? I see this one here is a 2.2. Yeah. Where do you see yourself going with it? Um, so we're initially launching with the 177 and 22. Um, but we are going to be looking at doing a 25 cal, but that's a little bit more, uh, a little bit more work to do and to make that achievable. So. Very good. And um, the other question everyone wants to know at home: yeah. When? When? Very soon. Very soon. We are looking to do our, our, our design pilot next month. If everything goes well, we'll be uh, doing a production run in March and shipping the stock in March. So great, and this is a three hundred dollar price yep. point, give or take. Is yep. that all right? Yep, two ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, it's just going to be gun only, not the scope. This is uh, our featured uh, new uh, precision lock uh, turret scope. So we just added up there for show. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it, but we're getting up to ninety shots. So the ninety shots is about 70, 70 shots on the regulator. Uh, it's set at sixteen hundred psi. After that, it starts to drop off, and then you get an additional about 15, uh, 20 shots uh, before you want to top off again. Is that so. in 2-2? Uh, yep, yep, for both uh, 177 and 22. I'm guessing around 20 foot-pounds-ish, probably. And yep, so lead velocity is 800 feet per second for uh, 22, 950 for 177. Okay. So. Awesome. Guys, I'm excited. So. Philip, thanks, man. Appreciate right. it again. Appreciate it. Hey guys, back with Philip in the Crossman booth, and I came across something that I guess the only way I'd know how to describe it is a different approach by Crossman going forward in regards to how they're going to manufacture, design and manufacture their brake barrel air rifles. Yes, yeah, so it's called the PB PBL. Yep. Does this come off of here? Yes, it comes off. There you go, brother. Take us through it. What are we doing different? All right, so this is our, our new PBL. It's gonna be called the Acura. Um, all the real technology is in the breech. One of the big uh, downfalls of a brake barrel is the barrel droop. It's either the, the end user did not lock it up in place or, or whatever the case may be, but the barrel is not fully seated in the, in the fixed position. So what we've done, we've actually flipped the detent and, and modified the breech differently. So as the piston drives forward, it's pushing up against the detent and creating a, a lock on the on the breech, so that or the barrel, I should say, and that's where you get the the, the barrel lock for it. Um, and it makes sure the barrel's in a fixed position, so every shot should be more consistent from shot to shot, and you don't have the variability of having the breech open partially or not fully seated, closed all okay, the way. Okay, so from reading Philip Wright, this is all about lockup, yep. and what lockup means to a. You know, a guy or gal that's shooting a spring gun is repeatable accuracy. Yeah. You get repeatable lockup, yep. you get repeatable pellets going down range. Yeah. Is that the idea? So we try to get as close to a fixed barrel as we can, even though it's a brake barrel. Okay. Now, this shroud is different than the SBD that I yes. reviewed last year. So is it going this way? Is it going that way? Or you guys so can do both? Or? Well, we're going to do a good, better, best uh, when it comes to our sound suppression. Uh, so our MP2, consider that our, our, our good. Then we have this, which is considered our gold. So the MP2 is silver. This is the gold version. Uh, there's two variants for the gold. Um, this one is the more standard version. Then we have more that's more uh, rectangle, more tactical looking. Uh, but this has some of the same technologies as our current SBD, which we are considered our platinum version and being our, our best based on when it comes to sound That's the quietest. That's the flagship. Yep. Gotcha. So. But now this to me looks like I'm seeing advantages here. It's kind of, I mean, not to take away from that, that that's not robust and everything, but it's yep. nice seeing it be all one piece and a little bit more compact. Yeah. yeah this gets me excited. Something, oh. you know, I could run the distance with. Yep. Not that that wouldn't, but a, a 17722? Uh, I believe so, yes. Um, one thing you may have noticed, if you're if you're familiar with it, the stock is off the, the Marauder platform. Yeah, I see that. So. One of the ideas I had last year, and I kind of pitched it to Jesse in the past, 
was to take our flagship uh, PCP, make a brake barrel out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we took that similar look, uh, moved the different angles just to accommodate uh, the brake barrel, and then uh, shortened it up and uh, had it fit to a brake barrel. So it's going to get launched with this. And, um, Camo as well in a synthetic version. That Gen 2, Gen 3 Marauder stock, yeah. I think I speak for most all of us that, that you know it's a winner. Yeah. So it's good to see you guys bring it over onto here. Now this is a, a production change. Yes. So when when can everyone at home expect this change to, to be um, you know? Well it's gonna start off with this model and then as time progresses it's gonna get shifted to the other models. Um, so it, it's only originally gonna start with this one. Very good. Did we leave anything out? No, I think that's good. That's it. Awesome. Thanks again, Phil. Yep. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> all right, guys, don't laugh at me because I think you all know that this really isn't my bag, but yeah. I imagine for some of you guys and gals out there, it is. So I didn't want to skip over it because it is actually really cool. Um, Philip, what is this machine gun looking thing on the wall? So this is uh, the, the DPMS SBR. Um, some of you don't know, but my background, I did 10 years in the Marine Corps. Very cool. So, thank you for your uh, service. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very into the tactical guns and everything like that. Um, and the CO2 rifle, we, we were lacking in that aspect of it. We have the 1077, more traditional style, but this speaks volumes. Um, it's nick it's, it's uh, the SBR because it's the industry word for or the industry acronym for a short barrel rifle. Okay. It's uh, can I don't remember the overall length, but I want to say it's around 26 inches. All right, I'm gonna so just. You guys aren't here, so you, and you can't see it the way I can see it. That thing looks real. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at the cuts because this is polymer, right? Yeah, it's all nylon. It high, looks like painted steel nylon. from like 10 inches away. This thing's it, kind of freaking me out. Oh, we didn't we didn't go cheap on the on the plastic on it. It's very durable, very realistic. Uh, I went with the the long quad rail system, a unique muzzle, has flip up uh, backup iron sights. If any of you that are military vets, you know what an O2 sight is. You can flip down the peep sight, open up your O2 sight. O2 stands for zero to 200 meters, and what that is is so you can quickly. Uh, engage your target or, or target acquisition with a bigger rear sight aperture. Okay. So you have your peep sight for long precision shots. Very cool. And then O2 sight gives you a quick target acquisition. All right. Uh, the ability to do that. So um, 200 meters isn't going to be where we're shooting the SBR at. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's, cool. it's more about realistic training if you want to do it with that. Okay, uh, sure. That makes but good sense. But I try to make it as realistic as possible. It looks it. So, for example, it's a true drop magazine. It comes with two CO2s that you uh, uh, input right there. Uh, it's a 30 round clip, so you pull the BB uh, follower down, put your 30 rounds in there. Well, where do you put in the BBs? Right there. I'm gonna you face this yep. to these guys. So the BBs go there. Yep. What, so it's a hand load, one at a time yep. thing. So you put you can hand load it, but it's also gonna come with a speed loader. So you can similar to like an airsoft speed loader, mm -hmm. you can be able to uh, squirt uh, the 30 BBs in there and get ready to rock and roll. Holy moly. What's unique about this, when the, when the magazine runs dry, it, the bolt locks to the rear because it's an air gun. And you can sit there, send it forward, just like a real real firearm. Um, comes with a six position butt stock. The pistol grip is AR compatible, so you can put any AR magpul pistol grip. But I designed it pretty well, so it's it's. I don't, I don't think anyone's going to change it from there unless they want something different. All right, I don't know anything about this kind of thing. This isn't my area. So I'm going to raise my hand like yeah. I'm in school. So the the mechanism that rechambers the BB and makes it automatic, is that yeah. like, is that electronic battery or is that all gas uh, operated? Like, how does this thing work? It's all mechanical. Because if, if you hold this for a second, just to show you Oh my you how, God, that's got some heft to it. Just to show you how real this, uh, this uh, air gun is. Uh-huh. It breaks down just like a real firearm. So you got an upper receiver, lower Show receiver. Show them that. And then you have the, the buffer that actually fires up and gets that. And this thing weighs, this feels like about a pound. I'm ex-law enforcement, and this feels like something I put it, <laughs> slap into the bottom of an MP3 or something. This is like the real deal. And you put it back together. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet, it goes semi-auto with one click. And then the fun happens when you get 180 degrees and it goes full auto. So we're, uh, I've clocked it going 1,400 rounds per minute. So rounds per minute. That literally goes through the BBs in a matter of like two, three seconds. There'd be BBs all over the backyard. Oh, oh yeah. 
but it, it's it's a fun. It, it's made to be a fun gun. Um, it's still pretty accurate, just semi-auto shooting BBs. Um, velocity, it, price point? Uh, velocity up to 430 feet per second. So they're moving yeah. them, steel also, BBs. Yeah. Um, it's going to retail for $179, um, and you'll probably find that in some of our big box stores. Holy and again, if, if I'm being stupid, I'm going to take off my hat because yeah. I'm trying to follow. He's hitting me with a lot of information. So there's no battery, there's no nope. mechanical servo. Nope. It's all operated off of a CO2 cartridge, just like you'd slap in the bottom of a Crossman pistol. Correct. Right. Call me converted. That thing's <laughs> cool, man. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate Thank you. Yep. All right, my friends, one last time with Philip in the Crossman booth. Good to see you. I uh, was cruising through here, actually cruising out of here, and this Magfire yes. caught was, my that, eye. That one, that one. Yeah, here it is. Sorry, I'm reaching over myself, I'm like blind and drunk here. But magazine-fed brake barrels is a, is a it's a it's a direction our industry is going. Oh yeah. You know, you saw Gamo come out with one. You know, Hotson answered. We reviewed we reviewed both of those. I'll link those in the description down below for you. And uh, Crossman answers the call with this one. So you want to take us through it, Philip, and yep. let so, us know what's going on. So we come out with a new stock. This is also going to be on our Diamondback uh, series. Okay. Um, the big thing about this, when it comes to brake barrel, it's hard to get that follow-up shot uh, unless you have some kind of magazine that either auto loads or already built into it. So that's where we're going for it, is to get that quick follow-up shot in case you miss. We all miss. Uh, no one's perfect. So yep. with this one, it's going to take our uh, Marauder magazine coming in both 177 and 22, and then simply as soon as you cock it, you break it down, um, and then you feed the pellet forward, and then it, and it goes into it, and then uh, that's how it loads up. Okay, so I don't know if you can demonstrate, but so I believe this is a prototype. Or a prototype, so, I don't so think there may be some changes from this. Uh, well, it's almost legit, but we can't uh, cock this one. Okay, but so. well, maybe we'll take them through it. So we're going to have a working one at the, the media range. Okay. Yeah. Well, just to take them through it, so they have clarity in their mind. You break the barrel down, yep. and then what happens? Then uh, you sit there, and uh, once you break it down, yep. then you push the, the, the bolt forward. Okay, so, loads. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so you push the bolt forward, it loads the pellet up, and then you bring it down, and it goes in. All right, so the action is down, forward with the bolt, back up. Down, forward with the bolt, back up. Yes. So so when it, I'm guessing when you push that bolt forward, there's a spring that pushes it back? Uh, or you pull it back? Well, it's, it, it, would, it would stay... Uh, Actually, I don't even know. Well, okay, if we don't know, yeah. that's cool. You know, no. this is this is be, this is beginning concept stuff. This is shot show. This is where we start down the path, and these guys don't necessarily know where the finished product is going to be yet. So there's yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Cool. So. You missing anything else? Nope. I think that's about it. I do want to touch on one thing. I've heard you say it twice with me today. These magazines, you're approaching it where they're like all interchangeable, or, or yes. at least they are between uh, the, uh, the the Fortitude, Fortitude the Marauder. The Marauder and now the Magfire. And now the Magfire. And yeah. these guys at home, it's not uncommon for us to own more than one Crossman or Benjamin, so I'm sure that's so, music to their ears. Well, it makes it user friendly. All right, the big so. question, when and approximately how much? Because right now they're all watching, <laughs> wondering what the heck, <laughs> wondering the, the answer to those two questions. Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not the product manager for this particular it's, it's one. Cool. Um, but I'll get back to you and, and get you that answer. Fair I enough. Wanna, I want to say it's around 200. Uh, 199 price point, but they'll quote me on it. That's fair enough. We don't know, guys. We're just going to have to wait and see. Buddy, you've been awesome. Thank you again so much. Yep. Appreciate it. Very nice.